Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Have you ever downloaded a file or program and felt that little twinge of anxiety? You know, the, is this going to give my computer a virus feeling? Or maybe you just want to browse the web without your browser saving every cookie and bit of history. Well, today we're talking about Sandboxy Plus, a fantastic and free tool that lets you run any program in a completely isolated environment on your Windows 11 PC. It's like a digital quarantine zone. Anything that happens in the sandbox stays in the sandbox. Let's dive in. All right, let's get it installed. Head over to the official releases page. First, a quick primer. Sandboxy was originally a popular paid application, but it went open source a few years back. The community forked it and created Sandboxy Plus, which is the version we'll be using. It's actively maintained and packed with features. In simple terms, it creates a virtual box on your system. When you run a program inside this box, all the changes it makes, files it creates, registry entries, even downloads are trapped inside. The moment you delete the sandbox, it's like it never happened. Your real system remains untouched and safe. The installation is straightforward. Just accept the license agreement and keep the default settings. It will install the core programs. Select personally for private non-commercial use. If you have a license key, enter it in the provided field to unlock the full features, then click Next. If not, simply leave the field blank and click Next to continue with the free version. Select Advanced UI for experts to access a broader range of settings and controls. You can select Dark Mode for visual comfort or Light Mode. Once you click Finish, you'll be greeted with this main window. Don't be intimidated, it's simpler than it looks. By default, you already have a sandbox called Default Box. Think of this like a ready-made sandbox that's already set up for you. The Default Box is just Sandboxy's way of giving you a quick, ready-to-use sandbox. No setup needed. For example, let us run the default browser in a sandbox. You'll notice a small yellow border around the window. That's your visual cue that the app is running in isolation. You can visit any website, download files, or test extensions without affecting your real system. Once you close the sandbox, all data is wiped out, but you have to also set some settings and options. It's a good idea to use separate sandboxes for different tasks instead of relying only on the default one. Each sandbox can be customized based on your own needs and preferences, and setting them up the way you like can actually be pretty fun. So let's go ahead and create a new sandbox. From the drop down menu, you can pick a box type preset, but keep in mind that some options are only available in the paid version. For now, choose the standard isolation sandbox, default, as your starting template. Also, don't forget to enter a unique name under sandbox name. This helps you tell it apart from the default box and any other sandboxes you create later. You can create multiple sandboxes for different tasks. For instance, one sandbox for web browsing, another for testing software, and another for opening suspicious files. You can also delete a sandbox anytime to clear all its contents. And that's it. Your new sandbox is ready and you can now start running apps inside it. For now, it works the same way as the default box, since we haven't customized it yet. To make it behave differently, you'll need to tweak its settings. Just right-click on your new sandbox in the Sandboxy Plus main list, then select Sandbox Options from the menu. Sandboxy Plus also lets you add some visual cues to your sandboxed apps, making it easier to tell them apart from programs running normally outside the sandbox. In the options, you can set a small indicator to show up on the app's title bar. 
This could be something simple like a number symbol, the sandbox's name, or you can leave it as is if you prefer a cleaner look. All these other options, it is up to you to decide what you want. When an app inside the sandbox needs a file from your real system, Sandboxy doesn't give it direct access. Instead, it creates a secure copy of that file inside the sandbox. This keeps your original file safe from any changes the sandboxed app might make. However, this process has a size limit to prevent your sandbox from becoming bloated with massive, unnecessary copies. If you try to open a very large file, like a multi-gigabyte DVD ISO, Sandboxy will refuse to clone it, and the app will see the file as unavailable. Your goal is to set this file size limit high enough for your daily tasks, like accessing typical documents or PDFs, but not so high that Sandboxy starts duplicating huge files and wasting disk space. You may use sandboxing software to isolate certain apps in a secure environment, but that doesn't mean you want the results of your work to stay locked inside. For example, if you create a document with a sandboxed text editor, you'll probably want to move it outside the sandbox. You could do this manually by browsing through the sandboxed folders with a file manager and copying the file, but there's also a way to automate it. In Sandboxy Plus, Open the Options window, select File Recovery from the left-hand menu, and enable the first setting. Enable Immediate Recovery. With this enabled, Sandboxy Plus will automatically monitor the sandboxed folders listed beneath that option. Whenever new files are created there, you'll be prompted to recover them. That is, copy them out of the sandbox to your normal system. Security Options. Think of this area as the control center for how tightly locked down your sandbox is. By default, the sandbox is already isolating apps from your main system, but these settings let you adjust the level of restriction. Some options control whether programs inside the sandbox can access your personal files outside it. For example, you can decide if the sandboxed apps are allowed to read or write to certain folders, or if they should be completely cut off. Others deal with internet access, letting you block or allow network connections for sandboxed apps. This can be handy if you want to run a program safely but don't trust it online. After applying your changes, you can test your sandbox right away. Just right-click on any file you want to open and select Run Sandboxed. Sandboxy Plus will ask which sandbox to use. Pick the one you just set up, and the file will launch inside it. This works not only for programs, but also for regular files like documents, images, or PDFs. When you open those, Sandboxy Plus automatically launches the software needed to view them inside the sandboxed environment, keeping everything contained. Once you're done, you can simply leave the sandbox as it is, but if you don't plan to reuse it, there's no need to keep its contents. Even if automatic deletion isn't enabled, you can clear it manually. Right-click the Sandboxy Plus tray icon, find your sandbox in the menu, and select Delete Content. Let me install some extension for Firefox. The extension has been installed, plus there is another one I installed earlier.
Let me now try downloading a file like VLC. The file is in a special location. You can click on Recover to take to say your downloads. If you check your downloads, the file is not there unless you recover it. You can also delete the contents of the sandbox from here. Let us open the normal Firefox browser and you will see that nothing has been installed there. I deleted the contents of the sandbox, you will see that everything has been reset to defaults. No extensions or downloads present. Sandboxy Plus is an incredibly powerful tool for anyone who values security and a clean system. It's a digital playground where you can experiment with zero risk. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and subscribe for more Windows tips and tutorials. It really helps the channel out.